Supply Chain Management, an overview of SCM operations. The learning objectives for this course. What is supply chain management? Why supply chain management? The components of SCM, types of flow, make versus buy strategy, the principles of SCM, the goals of SCM, the role of IT in supply chain management, and the future of supply chain or digital SCM. What is supply chain and its management? A supply chain is the connected network of individuals, organizations, resources, activities, and technologies involved in the manufacture and sale of a product or service. It starts with the delivery of raw materials from a supplier to a manufacturer and ends with the delivery of the finished product or service to the end consumer. Supply chain management is the management of the flow of goods and services and includes all processes that transform raw materials into final products. Why supply chain management? The key benefits of supply chain management are as follows. It develops better customer relationships and service. It creates better delivery mechanisms for products and services in demand with minimum delay. It improves productivity and other business functions. It minimizes warehouse and transportation costs. It also minimizes direct and indirect costs. It assists in achieving shipping of the right products to the right places at the right time. And supply chain management enhances inventory management, supporting the successful execution of just-in-time stock models. What are some components of the SCM process? Plan, source, execute, deliver, and return. And we'll talk more about each of these. Let's start with plan. We need to develop a plan or strategy in order to address how the products and services will satisfy the demands and necessities of the customers. In this stage, the planning should mainly focus on designing a strategy that yields maximum profit. Next is source. We mainly concentrate on building a strong relationship with suppliers of the raw materials required for production. This involves identifying dependable suppliers with different planning methods for shipping, delivery, and payment of the product. Next comes execute. In this component, the products are designed, produced, tested, packaged, and synchronized for delivery. This stage is considered as the most metric intensive unit of the supply chain, where firms can gauge the quality levels, production output, and worker productivity. Next is the deliver stage. Here, the products are delivered to the customer at the destined location by the supplier. This stage is basically the logistics phase where customer orders are accepted and delivery of the goods is planned. And last is the return stage. In this stage, defective or damaged goods are returned to the supplier by the customer. Here, companies need to deal with customer queries and respond to their complaints. Let's look at three different types of flow that you find in supply chain management. First is material flow. Material flow includes a smooth flow of an item from the producer to the consumer. This is possible through various warehouses among distributors, dealers, and retailers. Information flow or data flow comprises the request for a quote, purchase order, monthly schedules, engineering change requests, quality complaints, and reports on supplier performance from the customer side to the supplier. 
from the producer side to the consumer side, the information flow consists of the presentation of the company, the offer, the confirmation of the purchase order, reports on action taken on deviation, dispatch details, report on inventory, invoices, and more. The third type of flow is money flow. On the basis of the invoice raised by the producer, the clients examine the order for correctness. If the claims are correct, money flows from the clients to the respective producer. The flow of money is also observed from the producer side to the clients in the form of debit notes. Let's look at seven different principles of supply chain management. Principle one, Segment customers based on the service needs of distinct groups and adapt the supply chain to serve these segments profitably. Principle two, customize the logistics network to the service requirements and profitability of customer segments. Principle three, listen to market signals and align demand planning accordingly across the supply chain, ensuring consistent forecasts and optimal resource allocation. Principle four, differentiate product closer to the customer and speed conversation across the supply chain. Principle five, manage sources of supply strategically to reduce the total cost of owning materials and services. Principle six, Develop a supply chain wide technology strategy that supports multiple levels of decision making and gives a clear view of the flow of products, services, and information. Principle seven adopt channel spanning performance measures to gauge collective success in reaching the end user effectively and efficiently. The important goals of supply chain management are as follows. Supply chain partners work collaboratively at different levels to maximize resource productivity, construct standardized processes, remove duplicate efforts, and minimize inventory levels. The minimization of supply chain expenses is very essential, especially when there are economic uncertainties in companies regarding their wish to conserve capital. Cost efficient and cheap products are necessary, but supply chain managers need to concentrate on value creation for their customers. Exceeding the customer's expectations on a regular basis is the best way to satisfy them. Increased expectations of clients for higher product variety, customized goods, off-season availability of inventory, and rapid fulfillment at a cost comparable to in-store offerings should be matched. Let's take a closer look at the role of IT in supply chain management. Here are some of the benefits of interorganizational information systems within the supply chain. First, cost reduction. The advancement of technology has further led to the ready availability of all the products with different offers and discounts. This leads to a reduction of costs of products. Productivity. The growth of information technology has improved productivity because of inventions of new tools and software. That makes productivity much easier and less time consuming. Improvement in product market strategies. Recent years have seen a huge growth in not only technologies, but the market itself. New strategies are made to allure customers and new ideas are being experimented with for improving the product. Information technology is a key driver of supply chain management. Let's look at some of the critical hardware and software devices that deploys information technology. First, electronic commerce. This helps enterprises to automate the process of transferring records, documents, data, and information electronically between suppliers and customers, thus making the communication process a lot easier, cheaper, 
and less time consuming. Electronic commerce comprises electronic data interchange, email, electronic fund transfers, electronic publishing, image processing, electronic bulletin boards, shared databases, and magnetic or optical data capture. Electronic data interchange, or EDI, is another one. This involves the swapping of business documents in a standard format from computer to computer. EDI presents the capability as well as the practice of exchanging information between two companies electronically rather than the traditional form of mail, courier, or fax. Another piece of information technology used in supply chain management is barcode scanning. We can see the application of barcode scanners in checkout counters of supermarkets. This code states the name of the product along with its manufacturer. Some other practical applications of barcode scanners are tracking the moving items like elements in PC assembly operations and automobiles in assembly plants. Enterprise resource planning or ERP is another important information technology component for supply chain management. Enterprise resource planning software can be used to automate and simplify individual activities across a business or organization, such as accounting and procurement, project management, customer relationship management, risk management, compliance, and supply chain operations. These software systems like SAP, Oracle, PeopleSoft, et cetera, have taken over and enhanced the business processes that were traditionally being managed manually. Data warehouse is another term you might hear in supply chain management. A data warehouse is a centralized database that is prolonged independently from the production system database of a company. Many companies maintain multiple databases. The data present in data warehouses is time dependent and easily accessible. Historical data may also be accumulated in a data warehouse though. Digital supply chain management. A digital business network onboards once and is connected to many. The traditional supply chain has limited, limited visibility throughout the supply chain. We see a lack of real-time data updates it cannot adapt or is less responsive to changing market conditions. On the other hand, the digital supply chain ecosystem has intelligent control tower monitors, makes decisions and manages execution across functions and across companies to optimize the entire network. It's much more responsive, efficient, and cost effective compared to traditional supply chain strategies. The future of supply chains is going to focus on transparency, agility, and velocity. Now let's take a quiz to test your knowledge. The purpose of supply chain management is to A, increase the production level, B, manage and integrate supply and demand management, C, enhance the quality of a product and service, or D, provide satisfaction to the customer? The answer is B, manage and integrate supply and demand management. Blank mainly deals with all activities associated with the flow and transformation of goods from the stage of raw material to the end user. Is this production line, supply chain, inventory management, or marketing channel? It's supply chain. Which of the following statements is true for supply chain management? A, the physical material moves in the direction of the end of chain. B, the flow of cash moves backwards through the chain. C, the exchange of information moves in both directions. Or D, all of the above. All of these are true for supply chain management. So the answer is D, all of the above. Which of the following is the cost involved in holding goods in a warehouse? A, facility cost. B, processing cost. C, inventory cost. Or D, transportation cost. 
the cost of holding goods in a warehouse is referred to as inventory cost. The sequence of a typical manufacturing supply chain is which of the following? A, B, C, or D? The answer is B, supplier, storage, manufacturing, storage, distributor, retailer, customer. Supply chain management minimizes direct and indirect costs. Is this true or false? It's true. Which of the following is not a component of SCM process? Plan, return, execute, or guide? The answer is guide. That is not a component of SCM process. Plan, return, and execute are. True or false? Distributors and retailers often rely on storage warehouses. This is true. Which of the following is not a flow that moves up and down the supply chain? Monetary, procedural, informational, or physical? Physical is not a flow that moves up and down the supply chain. Which of the following is a principle of supply chain management? A, listen to market signals and align demand planning accordingly. B, segment customers based on the service needs of distinct groups. C, differentiate product closer to the customer. Or D, all of the above. The answer is D, all of the above. Thank you.